hello. My name is Isabella Marquez, um, but I mainly go by Bella now. Um, I am from Atlanta, Georgia. When I got diagnosed with fibro, um, I was a teenager. I was about 17. Um, I started showing symptoms at like 14 and it just kind of snowballed from there and it took three years to get a diagnosis which was actually pretty short considering other stories that I know of and have read and heard. I have learned a couple new things about myself since um, I've gotten diagnosed. That's for sure. Um, I think one of the big things I've learned is like a lot that I'm a lot more resilient than I thought I was. I think for a long time I thought I was very weak because I was always like a people pleaser. I was raised to be a people pleaser. And so like I always had a hard time sticking up for myself and telling people the pain I was in or the symptoms I was having or what I was going through. But what I realized after I got diagnosed and I started to feel more comfortable in my own skin, um, especially after the doctor confirming that I did have fibro, is that I was actually a lot more capable of standing up for myself and being a lot more resilient than I thought I could be um, in terms of setting my own boundaries for myself, sticking up for myself. Yes and no. I think it's a really mixed bag. Um, yes, in the sense of without, a, I of course first started my research at, you know, the Mayo Clinic where everything starts. And then from there, I kind of like clicked on their sources, which led me to like, you know, fibro blogs and like a bunch of different um, people describing their own personal diagnostic experiences. So without that, I genuinely do not think I would have been able to get diagnosed when I did because that was what led me to ultimately think like, oh, I need to go see a rheumatologist because this is most likely fibro. Because at this point, I've done every blood test. I've done every kind of scan, physical therapy. I've seen every specialist and nobody can figure out what's wrong with me. It's also, it is very limited, of course, to like, in the healthcare community, there is privilege towards like white people. And so like, there weren't really many like cases of, you know, different kinds of people, like even just men who had fibro because that's very uncommon or like POCs who had fibro or like, and I'm not even a POC, but that was something I noticed where I was like, this all just kind of feels like suburbi suburban moms and there's nothing wrong with that. But it was like definitely as a 16 year old girl who, who like is definitely very white passing, but it was like a first generation Cuban American. I was like, I don't really know that I fit into this category, <laughs> this genre of person. Um, and then I was also like struggling with my sexuality because I'm bisexual in a Catholic school. And so all of this was happening at once. And so to only see myself like kind of sort of represented, I don't think that was that helpful. And it's definitely not something commonly found in like popular media. You kind of have to hunt for it. Um, it's not like people on shows are like, I have fibro or I have this autoimmune disease. So it wasn't even something I considered a possibility. So I think it's like a mixed bag, yes and no. I think a big part of it is just like this fact that it's a lot more common than people think it is, is the first part. Because when I tell people about it, they're like, oh, well, that's really rare, right? And I'm like, well, it's like two to four percent of the population, which is like a low percentage, but that's a good chunk of people. Um, when you consider that there's almost eight billion people on this planet now. Um, so that's definitely a big one. Also just the conversation of the fact that it's a real and valid diagnosis. And it is like, for some people, a debilitating disability. Like for me, I use a mobility aid. That wasn't even something I knew I had the option to do until I saw other people with fibro posting about how it's really helped them. I think that's also a big part of the conversation that's missing. The fact that like, 
A, it is very real, very debilitating, but also there's a lot of different mobility aids or techniques that you are totally allowed to use to cope as long as they help you. Finding joy is definitely tough. I feel like it's kind of a fight every day because um, I, my fibro was very much so triggered by a trauma that I experienced and emotional trauma. And so the way that I found joy was, the biggest part was honestly going to therapy, which maybe that sounds weird how I find joy, but like I, going to therapy was probably the most helpful thing I ever did for myself because I was like, I genuinely do not know how to cope. I can't even feel grateful for anything. I feel numb. I don't know what to do. And going to therapy kind of helped give me almost my emotions back in a way because I had just become so numb to everything. And my current therapist, who she's amazing, we're kind of doing like a bunch of different treatments and we're figuring out what works and what doesn't. Um, and that's also been really helpful and very joyful because figuring out what works and when it does work is like one of the best feelings ever. But also just like community. Like I slowly kind of entered the fiber community um, and that was really helpful to connect online with people. And then I went to college and at college I've met a lot more people who have autoimmune um, illnesses or who are disabled all a bunch of different kinds of people and we just started a disabled student union um, and I'm the vice president and so like just kind of dipping my toe into all these different things. I also just kind of I kind of love to, like I'm a music maker so music is really helpful too. I love to songwrite. That's my big outlet is like when I'm feeling frustrated I need a healthy outlet. Songwriting is the way to go. If I'm really frustrated, I'll crochet because it's like there's something very therapeutic. <laughs> so, and that, those are definitely for me the biggest ways that I find joy and I'm able to feel grateful.